Hi Floss Soup, welcome to my channel. The channel's name is A Stitch Too Far and my name is Ingeborg. Uh, welcome if you are a returning viewer and subscriber. Welcome if you are a new watcher. If you're new to my channel, you're a bit out of luck because I am not going to have a lot of stitching to show. Well, I have some, but not my normal because I have been a bit of a fool. And since you last saw me, I have sprained my ankle pretty seriously, actually. Um, let's just say I did a stupid thing and stepped off of it's like a podium, like a higher platform thing and misjudged the depth and then went tumbling and sprained my ankle but yeah that happened and that means that um, I've had my ankle in a pressure bandage I guess the name is not sure but you know the one with the windings and I've had to keep it lifted and elevated at, at night or in the evenings when I wasn't working and uh, that meant that I couldn't use my magnifier which means that for most of my projects I couldn't stitch on them so I've been, um, I have been stitching because I was going crazy after a few days, but I've been working on things that I could see without magnifiers. Then already I am digressing. Let's just go again and say welcome to my channel. <laughs> Today is Sunday the 4th of June already. It's June. It's, what is that? Uh, we call it Pinksteren. You probably call it Pentecost? I think so. Uh, we have two days of those, so tomorrow, Monday, we have a day off as well. So yeah, for that. Uh, it's half past one. And the weather is a bit wonky. Uh, we've had a sunny morning and then uh, I quickly mowed the lawn because I haven't done so in two weeks because my ankle was sprained and it was a foot high. <laughs> so it took a bit of time to get it sort of mode. <laughs> I need to do it again. But then it started raining just as, as I finished. So and now the sun is out again. So I don't know what's going on. It's June and it's Netherlands. So weird days. Um, I have to check my nose because I've been digressing already so much. So yeah, uh, this will be a long video, I suspect, because I do have things to talk about and I'm trying to do the 20 random things about me tag and that I know she didn't start it, but I saw it on Dina's videos first, half stitch, cross stitch, and I've seen some other people do it and I thought I just, because I didn't have much to show, I need to at least talk a bit about myself. <laughs> Sort of to compensate, I hope you uh, you won't mind <laughs> if you do, then just switch off, but it'll, it'll be at the end anyway. But yeah, it, uh, it will be a long uh, video, I suspect, and I'm not drinking coffee, I'm having water. Cheers. Because I need to keep hydrated, because it's been, it's been really warm here. It's been, uh, I think 25 to 30 degrees centigrade over here and for the end of May, beginning of June, that's pretty warm. So yeah, I need to keep hydrated and make sure my ankle heals up okay. But oh yeah, coming back to that and then I won't ever mention it again. But yeah, I sprained my ankle and I... That was an, on my work day, so I had to finish off uh, my working and then I came home and I elevated it and I was feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> so I posted on Instagram <laughs> and thank you every, uh, everyone for your kind words and all your advice and well wishes and keeping in touch. Uh, some of you have uh, been asking me uh, even now, uh, how am I doing? I'm doing well. Uh, it just took a lot longer to heal than I was expecting. And I need patience for that and there's a reason why I stitched that patience piece, trying to get some patience out of it and I did but I still need more because of course I wanted to work and do all the things. But yeah, uh, I, 
it still hurts a bit, but that's just the ligaments that have been, you know, stretched. And that's the last thing that needs to heal now. The swelling is gone. The weird bump that I posted about is gone. <laughs> Thank God for that. It's, 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 it's not broken. It's never been broken. Uh, it's not torn or anything. I would know if it was that bad. I didn't go to the doctor because the doctor would have said what I would already concluded, that it's just really badly sprained. And it would take some patience and and uh, the pressure bandage help keep the, the swelling off a bit and um, now it's just making sure that I don't overdo it too fast and uh, make sure the ligaments get time to sort themselves out again and uh, yeah that's basically basically it but it's getting to the point where i can actually uh, use my stand and my magnifier again so i'm really looking forward to getting back to my regular rotation again because i have been stitching as i said but not on anything in my regular stuff so the other thing i wanted to mention is a thank you again for everyone who participated in the giveaway and sent uh, congratulations that was awesome and i've managed to get in touch with every winner now there was one person who i had trouble getting hold of but uh, she's given me her email address now so should be sorting that out soon getting her mailing address as well and i've I've sent all the other stuff away and I know that half of it has already arrived and the ones that are furthest away like in Canada and some in, in the United States still are waiting on their package but hopefully they will arrive in the next week or so. So uh, that's that I think. Um, yeah so let's just talk about what I've been stitching on because I figured that I couldn't work in my regular stitching spot because then I couldn't keep my leg elevated so I had to work on the couch or something and then I had my magnifier which was I tried moving it to my uh, coffee table and setting it up there and using that but the angles weren't just it wasn't working so <laughs> and then I did what I always do when I get injured or yeah, shit happens. I I go and do the hermit thing. So I just uh, retreated into myself and uh, didn't didn't watch any floss too because I couldn't bear it, <laughs> and just binge watched some other stuff on YouTube. And I did that for the long weekend at uh, Ascension Day. The Friday we had the day off. Well, I decided I had the day off. And uh, finally I snapped out of it because there were some people popping up in my floss to watch later list and I needed to watch them. So thank you again for helping me get out of my funk <laughs> and start watching floss to again. So I'm behind and trying to catch up but that'll take a bit of time but uh, i am watching again and i have been slowly getting back into stitching again uh, well i kept stitching but just you know if you have a day off and you can't really cross stitch because everything you're working on is 40 count <laughs> you can't see it but yeah uh, so what did I do? I dug around in my stash looking for things I could work on and I found the little gift that I got from Amanda in her giveaway which was a bookmark and that is on I think it's a 16 count Ada. So I stitched that and I finished that and here it is. And it's looking quite bright in this light. The red is not as bright as she's showing but yeah. It's really lovely. It, it, it uh, came with everything you needed with the felt packing and everything and the instructions on how to do it. They actually said that you're supposed to put a tassel in through this hole. But yeah, I didn't see a need for a tassel. I thought it would only be annoying to have a tassel. So I just have a plain bookmark, but I really like it. And it was nice to stitch on. 
and have something I could see <laughs> to stitch on. So that was one and it was a finish, fully finish. Then I pulled out, of course, the hard hanger. So I, I made some more of the, co the coasters that you can make in the hard hanger tutorial that uh, Stitching with a Smile Nina has put out. So I made a few more. I made a blue one. And the center, center motif is different because I just looked in my Hardinger book for uh, different motifs so that they would all be different. So this is the blue one and this is with a variegated pearl DMC and a regular number 8 D pearl DMC for the center bit for the dove's eyes. But yeah, that was one and then I made another one in red again with regular DMC. Is it focusing? No, it's not. Why is it not focusing? I don't know why. Uh, I want to go back to my old phone for filming because I have a feeling that was uh, better at focusing. And I actually made another one, a red one first, but I cut it out too close to the to the to this part and as I was doing that it started unraveling <laughs> and I tried to uh, uh, where is it where is it there it is I tried to fix it but yeah I wasn't too happy with it so in the end I just on this side as well it was also fraying so in the end I decided okay lesson learned don't go Cut too close to the edge and just do it again. So um, this one I'm going to toss, I think. Maybe put it upstairs in my office and use it there, but not over here. So the, this one was to compensate for the <laughs> for the failed uh, attempt at cutting too close to the edge. So did those. And then, uh, that was about two weeks later, then I... I took out this. I wasn't really feeling it, but I thought, well, might as well give it a go. It was the only thing left in my stash that I wouldn't have to kit up and that I could see. So I did this. is a Mill Hill kit for Snow, Snow Crystal series. This is the gold one. And that took about two days to, or two evenings to, um, stitch up and bead up and finish so this is the finish i actually cut it out and then put some felt in the back some white felt so what did i learn from this firstly um, next time i think i would put the felt on first and then cut it out because i'm not really happy with how that is how that worked out i'm not really really excited about this and i've been trying to figure out why it's the first time i've used paper for stitching on and you know that was okay it wasn't horrible um, the cutting out wasn't horrible i needed to find some scissors for that that were small enough and, and sharp enough that i could use but other than that wasn't horrible. I didn't like the fact that those bugle uh, bugle beads are a bit too big for this piece. And it's stupid. Why is it, not, it focusing? Anyway, uh, the thing I enjoyed most about this whole thing was actually making the hanger. <laughs> yeah, that was the most fun to do actually. So I think it's a combination of, um, uh, I'm not a gold fan, so maybe I should have started with a different one because I have two more in different colors, but gold is not my color. And yeah, I, I will try another one, but I'm just not really getting the whole, oh, I love Mill Hill kits. I don't hate them, I don't love them, it's just me. <laughs> yeah.
it'll be nice on my Christmas tree. So, that's all I stitched on. Oh no, that's not true. Because, of course, I was a good girl and I did my homework for the hardanger along. Oh, and I've been sewing. But, uh... I am in love with this fabric and with the inside fabric too. I love it. I love it. This is my favorite of all bags now. But yeah, this is where my hardanger along is in. And a loose thread. But yeah, I've been a good girl. So Miss Nina, I did my homework. I think the last time you saw it, I hadn't done the inner blocks. And the um, satin stitch on the outside, the half stars. So I did those in the last two weeks. And those satin stitches go so fast. It may have taken me maybe two hours, I don't think so. To make those. But yeah, I still love this. And it's getting close to go to either the outside border or... Some of the inside stuff. I think we're probably going to do the outside border first. Because if I remember rightly. We have been taught that you should always do all the cluster blocks. And all the satin stitches first. So. Look forward to that. And I did do. Uh, because when I was hibernating. I did do some sewing. So I did finish all the other bags for my frames, for my uh, scroll frames. They are all done now. So they are safely tucked away and no bugs can get to them. And then I started yesterday, I picked this bag up. This was my take with me to go somewhere piece. But yeah, this was the only one that I could really stitch on. That wasn't a Mill Hill kit. That was left to me. So this was the pattern. This is a Dutch design. It says seize the day in Dutch. And I've managed to get a lot done. And last time you saw it, it only had this and this border, I think, or this and this border, I'm not sure. Anyway, I did one of the sides and I did all the letters and I started on the apple. And I started in, on the apple in a different color because I felt it was getting to be a bit boring with just one color. And I thought it would be nice to have a green apple in it. Um, not totally convinced of the, on the color green. Let me know what you guys think. It's showing up pretty accurately. I think it's 989. Let me check. Yeah, it's 989, and the red one is 498. So, let me, you guys, let me know what you think of this color. I'm not totally convinced. But I do think it needs something different. And I, I, I did look at different greens but uh, this one was i thought it would be nice but it's a bit lighter showing up as it's as i thought it would yeah okay uh, let me think is there anything else we need to talk about Hardinger did that. Yeah, I showed you everything I've been working on. So now um, I did get some happy mail. Um, let's start off with that. I told you last time that I won a giveaway by Execute Designs, Jukas. She does hand dyed flosses and hand dyed uh, fabrics. And I got those in the mail. I won six of her hand dyed skeins. And um, if you remember that uh, drawn thread piece that I did not so long ago on the dark blue fabric with the white 
hardanger on it. That was her fabric as well. But I ordered some uh, colors and I ordered some for a piece I'm, I'm trying to get kitted up f uh, with specialty stitches, which is the trio stitches by Bee's Needlework. I've been looking for greens and browns and green is my favorite color anyway. So, And then I thought I'd try some colors that I'm thinking about for the Dragons of Sumatra because I would like to see if I could maybe use some of her flosses for that. So uh, I am going to start you off with the, the tree colors. This is called Old Rosewood. And do I have anything? Showing up at all? Pff, I can't tell. This is the stupid thing about this new... Yeah, this is better. This is showing up as is. So it's a pinky brown. It's it's a, a purpley brown. It's really nice. Not too strongly variegated, which I do appreciate because, of course, my own LNS does quite strongly variegated uh, flosses. This one is dark soil, and I had to get it just be because of the name because I love soil. I am a dirty girl. I am a geologist after all. But yeah, this is showing up pretty accurately too. It's a bit of grey-brown variegation. Really nice. I might use this for the tree trunk. I have to keep it on the fabric, see how I like it. This one I had to get, it's called Smaragd Forest, which Smaragd is emerald. And it's beautiful greens. It's showing up a bit more blue on the screen, but it's actually very much like an emerald with slightly hints of teal and mossy green, pine green colors. Very pretty. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a floss toss with every floss that I've collected so far for the tree and see because I found a fabric for it. I'll show you in a bit. This one is called Shabby Red, which is a contender for uh, Dragons of Sumatra, and it is showing up a lot more. A lot more red than it is in real life. It's more, it's more of a yeah, not a light barn red. Brick red, but not or not too orangey. It's so difficult describing colors. <laughs> anyway, um, this is sunny day, and this is lovely. This is showing up a little bit light, but it is that variegated with a, uh, with a true yellow and a bit of an orangey yellow in it. But the true yellow is more like a yellow that you would see on a smiley, you know, the emoticon. That kind of yellow and the darker yellow is more like an egg yolk yellow. Really nice. And then I had this one, holy yellow. And again, the light color is showing up a bit too light, but it is a variegation of a more soft orange. And I do like this too. I was thinking of um, doing the dragons of Sumatra in uh, red, white, black and yellow. So these are some things that I need to think about and compare and see if they might be the ones I will use. But that's still a long ways off. But yeah, thank you to XU Designs. I will link her Etsy store below. Go check her out. She has lovely fabrics as well as beautiful flosses. Uh, that one. Then I also told you that Glenn Tinsley, not Anne Tinsley, sent me something that she stitched on my birthday and it got here and it's beautiful. Look at this. And it says Carpe Diem, which suits my other piece, Pluck the Dag. And it's lovely and I will definitely frame it. And this is an interesting, uh, Glenn, can you tell me what fabric this is? Because it's, it's sort of a printed Ada, I think it's 18 counts. 16 maybe. 
That's really interesting. I've never seen a printed Ada before. It's really nice. And she actually added in the floss that she used to uh, stitch. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> stitch the uh, poppies. And this one is from Fiberlicious. And it is called Shades of Red. And it goes from a soft pinky red to a beautiful purpley red. Love it. Thank you very much, Glenn. And she added a beautiful, beautiful card. That is just beautiful. Makes me want to try out the ribbon uh, embroidery one day. Too much that I want to do. And then I was surprised by a belated birthday gift from Chantal for Beast. <laughs> Which you didn't have to do, but thank you anyway. She sent me a bunch of beautiful pearl cottons. Look at those. That is awesome. Because I have been depleting my stock <laughs> with all the hardening I've been doing. So this is, comes in very handy. Thank you very much that you didn't have to do it, Chantal, but hartelijk bedankt. <laughs> And then I want to show you some things from the mail that I've been waiting for. I was waiting for an order to come in and this has been around the block a few times on Floss 2. People have shown it, but I saw it first on Stephanie L Lindy Stitches channel, who I absolutely love. And I had to put it on my wish list the moment I saw it the first time and then kept it on my wish list for a while and then finally had to get it when I was ordering some stuff and it was on sale anyway so yeah of course I got this how could I not it's gorgeous let there be monsters uh, here there be monsters by Elizabeth needlework designs antique Celtic sampler it's called it's just yeah, this is going to go and get kitted soon, I think, because I love it. And then I have been looking around and I've been showing you a while back some other fabrics that I've ordered to, to use for the Tree of Stitches. And I should have gone with my first thought, which was uh, a fabric that I first saw on Crafty Kim's. Yeah, I think it was you, Crafty Kim's channel. She did the X's and O's one with the, with the girl on the swing. And that was a great stitch, by the way. And she did it on this fabric. And I, I remember asking her about it and it's showing up pretty accurately. It is just a white fabric with a light blue mottling on it. And it is like, well, more like a spring sky to me but it's called summer sky it's a jobelin from witchhold and i wanted to get that for my tree of stitches and i didn't because i had to get it from the united states i couldn't find a vendor in europe so i tried other vendors and in the end they were all too blue and this is perfect so i decided i will take a gamble and order it and it is i when it came in i knew yeah i should have done this uh, from the start. This is perfect for me, for what I want it to be. So now I finally have the fabric that I want for Tree of Stitches, so that might be getting kitted up soon too, because of all the floss I have now, I can really make a good decision on that as well. But yeah, those came in the mail. And uh, they were behind on, because suddenly everybody wanted this, apparently. <laughs> They uh, ran out of stock on the Summer Sky fabric at 1 to 3 stitch, so that's why it took a bit of time to get to me, but it got here in the end. So then there's actually just two things, random things I came across that I wanted to show you. Uh, I got the... Um, uh, this is the Verveco. They always have a yearly magazine with all their... Uh, products for that year. Well, th I think there's some that are older because 
this one I have and I've stitched and I've shown you in one of my first videos so that was last year but I saw these and all of these are going to have to go on my wish list <laughs> these are just so perfect for me but I looked them up and I think they're a bit pricey so I'm going to wait until they are going to get uh, on sale because I can imagine that not everyone wants to stitch those beetles but I will definitely want to and I want to stitch those butterflies too they might not be on sale but I think the bugs will be so something I need to keep around to remind myself to check on regularly and then I lost one of my things but I watched uh, Mary Rose's video it might have been yesterday uh, what's her name uh, stitch bliss corner is her channel and she talked about Asher and after she talked about it I grabbed my copy of his works because I have loved him ever since I've heard of him and that was back in my late teens I think and I've been looking at things that I might want to consider trying to find in a cross stitch pattern or even make in a cross stitch pattern and one of them she, show, she showed you this one in her video and I like these because of the fact that they are uh, two dimensional representations of three dimensions and in the sense that you're seeing a puddle of water and you're not seeing what's below it but you're seeing what's reflected in that so you're seeing what's above it and that that aspect i really like and i would definitely like something like this to stitch and the other one well there was another one but i lost the tag but this one is high on my list if anybody's ever seen this i know probably uh, oh my god, what's your name? <laughs> McKenna! <laughs> Wouldn't you just love to stitch this? This weird beastie. Oh, if there is... I'm going to so look for a, a, a pattern with this on it. And if not, I'm going to so make it for myself. Yeah. Uh, don't use a tag. So, what are we at? A halfway. Well, half hour. I could end it here. The video, that is. Um, but I will do uh, the uh, 20 random things about me tag. And I thought that it was quite hard to find 20 things uh, that were interesting. Or that I would at least have a little bit of a story about. So... You don't have to look up anymore so you can safely go go ahead and stitch <laughs> if you weren't doing that already but yeah i'm not going to show anything else anymore i'm just checking to be sure yeah <laughs> i'm just going to look over there because there's my laptop with my random facts about myself and because i'm doing random facts about myself i don't think i'm going to end with a random dutch fact because i'm dutch so you're getting 20 random dutch facts about my dutch being yeah so first thing i would i thought i would just uh join one of Fiverr's club and say my front teeth aren't real either uh, this one is definitely not real and this one is only half real uh, when I was about 11 or 12 I had a bicycle race with my neighborhood boy boy the boy that lived in my street although only two boys living in my street and one girl so uh yeah so we had a, a bicycle race and i was standing on the pedals and i slipped off and i hit my head on the steering wheel and i fell off my bike and I, when i got up i had all these weird rocks in my mouth as i thought they were rocks and spit them out and the neighbor boy said hey what happened to your teeth and yeah that, those were my teeth so of course, I had already had my 
adult teeth, so I didn't I wasn't wasn't my luck that I would have a chance to change them for adult teeth, but yeah. So uh, I spent my high school years with uh, uh, only half front teeth because, well, I didn't really see a need to immediately uh, get them repaired. And since I was playing basketball and things like that, I might actually get them knocked out again. <laughs> so I only got them fixed when I went uh, to university. So when I was 18, I had my teeth fixed so that they were normal again. And that was quite weird after about six years of eight years of not having only having half front teeth. They kind of get in the way when you, <laughs> when you get them back. <laughs> okay, so fact that was fact number one. Fact number two uh, is uh, my uh, favorite perfume, which is uh, called uh, Chalimar, and it's by Guerlain, which is a French perfume house. I I hate most perfumes. I think they're too flowery or too heavy. Or this one is fine. It's perfect for me. I will never get any other, and I will only get the real deal. I remember going on a trip to Egypt once and getting lured into some weird place where they sell uh, oils perfumed oils and said and they could make any perfume you wanted and it was true it did smell exactly the same but i didn't buy any because in the end my friend did and she got them home and after a week they didn't smell anymore so oh well but so i only get the real deal and i usually get them when i have uh, Every once in a few years I go on a big trip and I have to travel and fly for that and I usually buy my perfume then. So that's it. Um, so number three. I have had glasses since I was four years old. I've never wanted contacts. I can't stand the fact of anything touching my eyes like that. <laughs> Just uh, freaks me out. So I'm perfectly content with wearing glasses even when it was not in style or uh, considered okay to have glasses I've never been any any person that actually follows trends anyway so and I uh, needed those because I have a lazy eye which means this eye uh, doesn't focus very well when they discovered it, it was so bad. I only had about 20% vision in that eye and they managed to bring that back up to about 60, 70%. So this eye is still really bad. Um, this eye is okay, but yeah. So I have plus glasses and this one is like plus five and this one is like plus one and a half, something like that. So a really big difference. So. My glasses tend to go like this because this one's heavier. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have a lazy eye and that also means that I have trouble seeing depth. And that, that is coming back to my sprained ankle again. <laughs> I have a hard time judging depth because I can't see depth. Uh, there was a time in the 90s or eight, uh, late 80s when it was popular to have those dotted prints where you could that doesn't, didn't look like anything, but if you could see depth, then it had a 3D effect. Yeah, but I, I couldn't see anything in those. I really hated that trend. <laughs> I'm like, what are you looking at? It's just dots. <laughs> and uh, surprisingly, I do manage perfectly fine normally. Um, every time I get a new car or a new furniture, I need to adjust to make sure that I know the size of it because I might park a little bit too close to another car or a little bit too far away or I might bump into things because I'm expecting them not to be there and that just takes some time to adjust and then it's, it's all fine in the end. But yeah, I have a trouble seeing depth really well um, and I've gone by in my life um, just fine by just being good at guessing depth and guessing when the ball is going to come my way in basketball and things like that. Uh, but yeah, be, before I was four, I didn't realize that the grass actually were sprigs of grass. I just thought it was one green flat thing. I didn't know there were leaves on the trees. I didn't know there were uh, lines on the pavements. I didn't see any of that. 
uh, four. So <laughs> at this rate, this is going to be a long video. So I'm going to have to stop sharing so much about my past. Uh, it'll come someday, I'm sure. Uh, so four, I watch floss tube in the bath. Another random fact about me. I watch YouTube in the bath and mostly it's floss too because, you know, I always have to catch up with everybody. Random fact number five. I hate sunbathing. I don't hate, hate it. I, I can do it, but I just get fidgety after about half an hour, maybe even less, 15 minutes. I'm like, okay, next, what are we going to do? <laughs> I just... I. Yeah, I burn easily, I sweat easily in the sun, and I would rather be walking all day in the sun than just spending a half an hour on a chair in the sun. I just don't. It's not for me. So, number six. I used to have long hair uh, when I was about eight. I had long hair, and when I was about 16 to 19, I had long hair uh, beneath my shoulders. Uh, and after that and before that I have cut it like this. This model is my final model. I'm not doing anything else to it. I'm not going to go back too long because if you have thick hair like I do and it's curly, it takes a whole day to dry if you washed it. So, yeah. Um, but I do have uh, a little... Uh, like a tick uh, left over from that because I still wipe my long hair behind my ears because it's something I used to do and I haven't gotten rid of it even with my short hair. Um, so, random fact about me number seven. I have not worn any dresses or skirts for 25 years. I counted them out between about 12 year old and about 38 years old i didn't wear dresses or skirts because i'm a practical person and in the netherlands uh, especially if you're a student or if you yeah if you're a student if you go to work on everywhere you go is you go by bike and by public transport and i don't know if you've ever ridden a bike in a skirt and you can do it but i uh, I don't like it because you have to keep holding down your dress and I'm not that much of a, I don't care about trends and I just want to wear practical clothes. So I wear uh, uh, jeans or uh, regular uh, long trousers. Um, and uh, after a while I decided when it might be fun to have a few dresses. So I have some now, but uh, yeah, for a long time I didn't. Uh, number eight, I have an unreasonable and unrational fear of boats. I don't know why, but the bigger the boat, the more uncomfortable I am. I will get on them I, if I have to. I will not by choice go on a cruise or a boating trip. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I think, uh, and when I'm on them, I prefer to be on the deck, so on the surface where I can see the water. And it's not a fear of boats, I think it's a fear of, of sinking. <laughs> it's like you're not afraid of flying, you're afraid, afraid of crashing. So uh, the bigger the boat, the more problems I have. So the more far away I am from the water surface, the, the less comfortable I am. I love swimming, but I hate boats. So. Who knows why? Uh, number nine. Uh, I'm not sure if you already knew this, but I uh, we used to have sheep. I think you knew that. But I hand raised and hand fed one of the lambs uh, that we were uh, having. Just one of the lambs decided to, the mother did, decided they didn't like it, so they kept bucking it away. They couldn't be fed, so we had to hand fed them every day. And feed them every day with a bottle and I was the one to do it for that particular one and I called him some name that I'm not gonna say <laughs> because I use it sometimes for safe passwords and things like that <laughs> but whenever I would call him then he would come running immediately even when he was old enough that he wasn't 
uh, bottle fight anymore. But yeah, I did that and then it went to the slaughterhouse. That's what happens to animals that you raise for meat. Uh, number 10. I'm, <laughs> I'm hesitant to say this, but yeah, I have stolen a few street signs in my youth. That's about as criminal as I've ever gotten, I think. But yeah, uh, it was a sort of a thing in my student days that we would take off funny street signs and put them in our student chambers or our student homes. Yeah, I did that. Um, moving on. <laughs> uh, number 11, I hate having my picture taken. And uh, that comes from the fact that when we were little, my dad was a bit of a uh, enthusiast when it came to photography. He, when he was younger, he used to do his own uh, developing of film and things like that when there was still film. And he was such a fidgety person that we uh, we had to have our family portrait taken every now and then, and it took forever to sit there in our neat dresses and smile for the camera because he was all, of course he he didn't just say to my mom to sit down and let me focus on you and let the kids come in when they when I'm ready. No, we all had to sit there <laughs> while he fidgeted with his camera for an hour to take one picture and then after developing it, it turned out it wasn't perfect. So we had to do it again. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of pictures. I love photography. I love taking pictures, but not, I don't like taking pictures of me. I like taking snapshots of people when they're not aware that they're being photographed. Um, number 12. Um, when uh, I have fallen down the stairs and dislocated my shoulder the night of my PhD graduation. So I had my graduation and after that we had dinner with my professor and my promoter and my family and some other people. And I fell down the stairs. <laughs> I slipped. I, I didn't drink. Well, I did drink, but I didn't drink that much that I fell down the stairs for that reason. But I did slip and fall down the stairs and ended up having my shoulder dislocated. So when we went to my PG party, I was in a sling. And something I didn't know that was possible, but I've also on one point dislocated my kneecap. So if you didn't know you could do that, yes, you can do that. It's wasn't that painful and it slipped back on its own, but it was weird and <laughs> not something I want to repeat. Uh, number 13. Um, I don't know if you guys do this, but we have this system when uh, when you buy a bag of coffee, there's this that these points that you can cut out and you can save them. And if you saved enough, then you can get like a discount on a coffee cup from that coffee brand. Now I have been doing this my whole life and I have a, sh a jar <laughs> full of points and I have no intention of ever cashing them in because it takes like a gazillion points to get a, a euro discount on a teaspoon, something like that. And I still keep doing that. I still keep cutting out those points. Anyone else do that? It's just weird. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> it's silly. Um, yeah, number 14. I hate the flavor and I, this time I hate, hate it, the flavor of diet Coke or diet soda, anything. It is that, uh, aspartame, which is in it. That is just, it tastes so weird to me. It's just like a chemical taste and I don't like it. I just drink regular soda. I don't drink hardly any soda anyway, so whenever I do, I don't mind that there's sugar in it. Yeah, hate it. Um, another thing about food, number 15. I get goosebumps from peach skins. So you know that little hairy skin on the peach? Oh. <laughs> when I think about it, I, I even get goosebumps just trying to imagine myself biting in it and... Oh. No, no, I, 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 I 
someone else has to skin my peaches because I'm not going anywhere near them. <laughs> okay, number 16. This is also cooking related or food related. Um, uh, when I am slicing, I have a tendency to count and I have been not aware of this for a long time, but I have been for some time and I'm, I, I, I keep wondering if it's because of cross stitch that I've started counting when I'm slicing or I don't know why, but it, I, I never noticed it before, <laughs> but I do know that when I'm slicing a cucumber or carrot or whatever, I'm counting my slices for no apparent reason. So, uh, number 17. A random fact about me. Uh, I was born at home. I wasn't born in a hospital. And if you're Dutch, you may think, well, big whoop. But I know that there are other countries where that is not the normal routine. In the Netherlands, it is normal that if you have a normal pregnancy and there is no medical reason for it, you just have your baby at home. And you only have your baby in the hospital when there is a medical indication like uh, the baby hasn't turned or uh, there have been complications in a previous uh, pregnancy or you have a certain medical history that requires you being you know observed more closely by doctors when you're having a baby but yeah i was born at home um number 18 um uh, not particularly interesting but i have moved house 11 times in my life and i'm 44 so on average every four years which is close to true some places I've been longer, some places I've been shorter, but on average, uh, and I do get an itch. I when I, I've been living here now for yeah eight, eight, eight or nine years, and I, I around four years I had that itch that I thought hmm, maybe I need to move again. But I this house I bought, so not rented, so yeah, I'm not not doing that. <laughs> but yeah, I've moved eleven times in my life so far and that brings me to number 19 uh, at one point in my life i was actually planning to emigrate to australia it didn't fall through uh, didn't go through uh, it was around the time that i started my first job after my graduation i wasn't sure that it was what i wanted to do to do so i and i had been to australia a few years before that really enjoyed it and really thought might be a place for me. I still think that. But in the end, the new job did work out very well and that sort of made me decide to stay. So yeah, might have been coming to you from Australia if things had gone differently. So, uh, number 20. I have been technically homeless for two months in my life. Uh, that was when I was in university and I was kicked out of my student home. Uh, we have a we yeah, we have a social uh, social housing for students, but I was in uh, private housing. So the person who was renting my place just decided to uh, stop the rent and say, just mention it to us that the rent would be stopped and that we had to find a different place to live. In the middle of summer, <laughs> when I was on, just about to go on a field trip. So when I got back, uh, I didn't have, I hadn't had time to look for a different place. So I didn't have anywhere to go. And I spent about two months with uh, my essentials in a box, a carpet box. <laughs> Sleeping on couches uh, at my friends and different places and traveling around with my, my cardboard box. <laughs> So not really, really homeless, but yeah. And then a bonus one. If I had been a boy, I would have been called Hendrik. That's the last random fact about me. I hope you enjoyed that. That was fun to try and think of things to talk about. Um, oh yeah, there's one thing I wanted to do before uh, I say goodbye to you and uh, there have been people asking me how I pronounce my name 
and so I was thinking about that to help you guys out um, how could I do that and here is the lesson in learning how to say my name so I have broken it down into three words thing a Borg so thing you know what a thing is just remove the th from it then you have ing a as in a, a dog a cat a pair a ing a Borg as in seven of Borg if you watch Star Trek so if you say that after one another Ingeborg you've got my name and you're like 95% of the way you would say it in Dutch which is Ingeborg and there has just then you just have a bit of more of a emphasis on the G and I don't mind if you don't do that if you just say Inge, Inge, Ingeborg that's fine but that might be helpful to some of you <laughs> anyway I have been talking about myself far too long and I hope you did enjoy that part uh, because um, I did want to make it about an hour video because I had some complaints <laughs> that my previous one was too short <laughs> so maybe one hour will be the norm from now on I will try my best and hopefully I'm I'm going to see if I can get my rotation started in the coming week and uh, I think that would be possible because I have been itching for some pieces to work on like the Mirabilia garden party I really want to work on that so I think uh, now that I have just have um, I'm using just a little elastic brace thing on my ankle now because the swelling has gone completely I just want to make sure that it doesn't uh, um, move too much around so that's why I'm still using the elastic brace but I can keep my foot down for most part now without it swelling up so I think it's about time that I get the stitching and since we have the whole day off tomorrow I might just do that although <laughs> I haven't cleaned the house in two weeks so I might just have to do that first anyway I was saying goodbye I hope you have a wonderful two weeks of stitching I hope you all all doing very well and I uh, will be seeing one of you in two weeks Gea and I'm trying to remember your Instagram name feather stitches I think but she contacted me and she said she was going to my LNS and I had mentioned before that if she would I would try and join her and I will and my plan is and before I forget this because this is sort of important because I have been so tempted seriously tempted to go to the retreat that uh, Joan and uh, Michelle a farm girl are organizing I've literally looked at flights costs and trying to work out um, if I could sort of do a road trip to the Pictures Plus store as well and I could do it only um, the, the timing isn't right because it's close to a Dutch a big national symposium that for my line of work I have to attend actually yeah it's mandatory that I attend for a project that I'm doing so that was a bit yeah I couldn't I couldn't afford to do that I will definitely consider doing that someday but it got me on thinking about uh, retreats and trying to get people in the Netherlands together for a stitch stitching day or something so what I, my goal is for when I meet up with Gea at my LNS in two weeks is try and have a chat with my LNS owner to see if she might be interested in uh, uh, having a, some sort of stitchy afternoon uh, for anyone who is interested who watches my channel so my question to you would be uh, if you're from the Netherlands or maybe Belgium uh, it would be a, a stitchy store in the close neighborhood of Arnhem which is in the Netherlands if you want to look it up look up uh, bordurparadise.com I will add a link down below if you want to check out where it is um, I just need to know if there are people who are interested in having like a stitchy meetup at my LNS 
or just uh, to meet up there, have a browse in her shop and go to have a coffee. I don't mind. I thought about doing a stitchy meetup in my place, but I don't think I have the space for it. But that also depends on how many people are interested. But I thought it would be fun just uh, to have a chance of meeting some of you. Uh, so if you're interested, not in two weeks, just whenever I, I will let you know. Uh, if you would like to meet up at that LNS uh, for a browse and a coffee and maybe a stitch, uh, please leave a comment because then if I go to my LNS in two weeks, I could maybe let her know the amount of interest there is for it. And she might, if there's enough interest, she might be able to, you know, uh, stay open after her usual hours for, you know, if people aren't able to come right away or, you know, if the dates aren't what you want. Um, she might be persuaded to do that if there's like 10 people who are probably going to buy stuff at her place that are coming. I don't know. Anyway, if you would like to do that, if you're serious, if you're serious about it and, and, and say, okay, yeah, I, can, I can sacrifice Saturday and, and go uh, to Arnhem and have a fun stitchy day, would love to hear from you. Now that is definitely what I wanted to talk about. Um, and now I'm trying desperately to think if there was anything else I wanted to talk about. I don't think so. No. If I forget, then maybe I'll come back. And otherwise I will see you all in two weeks. And I will try and also try and see if I maybe can do some filming in my LNS and try to add that on. Uh, and that's about it. It's it's high time to stop this video. <laughs> um, have have a great uh, uh, Pentecost and uh, summer because I think officially it's summer now, start of June. So yay for that. Uh, we have had okay weather, so I hope that this will continue on and I actually get to enjoy it a bit because I haven't been able to go walking as I had planned to do um yeah uh see you in two weeks happy stitch you guys bye